rain heading our way, and that's changing some plans for some community events all across the Bay Area over the weekend. KTVU's James Torres joins us live in San Francisco this morning with an update on how some organizers are making adjustments because of Mother Nature. James, good morning. Frank, good morning. Certainly keep your eye on the forecast today because if you poke your head out the door, you'll see blue skies, sunny. It actually seems like a very stunning day, but of course that is set to change later this afternoon and that could affect what you do with your day later today. We know the ground very much saturated and still wet from the rain that we saw yesterday and we expect more of it a little later on. We'll take you to Oakland and talk about what's going on there today because the Oakland uh, Chinatown Improvement Council is preparing for its second annual Lunar New Year Parade. That'll start about 11 o'clock this morning at Wilma Chan Park. And they are saying it's going on rain or shine. Forecasts are actually looking in their favor. It seems we won't really see the bulk of the rain until after the parade is over. But organizers say if they have to deal with the worst, they are prepared for it. With the heavy rain, it's it's a testament to our community and our, our board members that we're just resilient. Uh, it's the year of the dragon. So like we've told our participants and community that, hey, you know, we're going to do it, this rain or shine. And we'll take you over to the San Mateo coast because many parks and trails there will likely stay closed today. Park officials saying they need to check out the road, the trail and facility conditions to make sure the saturated ground, which can also bring in the threat of falling trees, is it too dangerous for people to walk through? And then over down the peninsula in Millbrae, a rescheduled Lunar New Year parade. That was originally set to happen yesterday morning, but those rain showers forced organizers to push it back until later this morning. They're set to start about 10 o'clock in the downtown area. We're live this morning in San Francisco. I'm James Torres, KTVU, Fox 2 News. Loving the sunshine out there right now, James. Thank you for that. The uh, governor's office of emergency services is sending fire personnel and equipment to several counties this weekend. Napa and Sonoma are among the Bay Area counties receiving aid. Governor is sending five fire engines, a tractor and an incident management team to Napa County. Sonoma County will see an additional 10 fire engines, three dispatchers, four management team members and a swift water rescue team. It's unknown how long the services will be made available to those two counties. Communities are using the break in the rain to clean up from yesterday. I want to show you the scene in Santa Rosa where a tree came down on some cars in a restaurant parking lot yesterday afternoon. Fortunately, no one was hurt, but as you can see, the cars were badly damaged. There was actually only light wind at the time, but experts say the tree roots probably gave way because the ground is so saturated from the storms we saw earlier this month. Uh, so even though the winds are not expected to be as strong as they were uh, in early February, uh, any gusty winds uh, could likely bring down additional trees. The possibility of flooding and mudslides also shutting down roads near Mill Valley. Many people are headed for hardware stores to stock up on tarps, pumps and sandbags. Batteries and lanterns are some of the other popular items because the wind could push trees down and power lines, leaving people in the dark. And while hardware store workers are helping people prepare, workers at one Mill Valley store say even they can't keep the water outside if the ground is already soaked. We do get a lot of flooding each season. We're kind of used to it, though, but the water will come in throughout the store, especially during this bad weather. First responders are hoping most people will stay off the roads if at all possible. So if you do have to be out, emergency teams are reminding drivers just don't drive around any barricades. Do not drive through fast moving water and keep in mind that the water may be deeper and more powerful than it appears. Time now is 8.05. The usually crowded beaches in Pacifica have been largely empty over the holiday weekend, all because of our stormy weather. Waves as high as 30 feet have been crashing ashore for the past few days. Those big waves have attracted some surfers, but most people have been staying away from the ocean because of the dangerous conditions. One man from Pacifica found himself alone while taking his two dogs out for a daily walk at the beach on Saturday. I think they prefer it when there are more people out here. I like it better when, they, when it's rainy because it, it's empty out here and we have the whole beach ourselves. So it's better for me, but for them, probably not as good. 
Quiet holiday weekend at Pacifica's beaches comes despite city's decision to partially reopen one of the city's biggest attractions. A large portion of the Pacifica Pier reopened on Valentine's Day after being closed for nearly six weeks due to the storm damage. But the pier has since been closed once again because of our weekend storms. The Point Reyes National Seashore also announced that there will be some closures as a precaution to the storm. The park says the lighthouse and visitor center will be closed along with Drake's Beach Road and the surrounding area. Lehman Tour and Mount Vision Roads will also be closing and this is all going to last through the end of today. Teams are planning to run an evaluation tomorrow morning to see if those areas are safe to reopen. And meanwhile, Santa Cruz County has a flood watch in effect through Tuesday. In response, the county is opening up emergency shelters today. There are three locations, the like Santa Cruz Veterans Hall on 840, 846 Front Street, Depot Park at 119 Center Street, that's also in Santa Cruz, and the Watsonville Veterans Hall on 215 East Beach Street in Watsonville. Space is limited, so people will be allowed in on a first come, first served basis. San Francisco Public Public Works is reminding residents that they can still pick up some free sandbags uh, during the rainstorms if you need them. Residents and businesses can grab up to 10 bags from their operational yard, the area of Marin and Kansas streets. They can be picked up between 8 o'clock this morning, so they just open until 2 o'clock. That is Monday to Saturday, actually, not open today. All you have to do is bring proof of a San Francisco address. CHP warning drivers on their way up to the Lake Tahoe area on this Sunday morning to be prepared for possible delays and detours. We just checked the Caltrans website. Right now, chains are required on Highway 50 between Twin Bridges and Myers. You're looking at that right now. It's probably pretty icy out there. There are also chain requirements on Interstate 80 between Nyack and Truckee. California Highway Patrol urging all drivers check the latest road conditions before you head to the hills because they can change in just a couple of minutes. And I'm going to try hmm. to work my way up there after the show today. And uh, Rosemary gave me a window. Yeah, well, a small window to get out there. And yeah. when you look at the roadways, it's kind of deceiving. Twin Bridges is right when you start really that, that really, really hard going climb and then going up and over and then drop down into South Lake Tahoe. And that area, I mean, the ice and, you know, and when it gets windy up there yeah, and then we have more weather coming, that can one be... One lane either way, too, for it, a part of that. Yes, yeah. It can be a treacherous drive, Rosemary. Yeah, I, you know, gosh, I've, I think the last time I was uh, coming home, it's just a little bit of snow. I mean, it was just kind of like drizzling, and it made it just very scary and dangerous. So uh, be prepared. We uh, have uh, more winter weather on the way. Here's a look over the East Bay, where we are starting out with partly cloudy skies. That tree on the left, awfully still. So a quiet before the next storm. We do have a little bit of fog reported uh, in our Delta area, the Karkina Strait area. Concord reporting uh, visibility low. You can see it there on the icon. Temperature wise, we're a little bit cooler because of the clearing out there during the overnight hours and this morning. 46 Santa Rosa as well as Concord. Low 50s of San Francisco and Oakland. Checking in on the visibility here. Again, Concord, one of the spots reporting a quarter mile, but that that dark shade of gray is indicating we've got more out there, especially if you're hopping on the highways and heading east. You may find some in the Sacramento San Joaquin Valley area. Uh, the central and south bay looking okay, at least when it comes to visibility on the roadways. Here's a look at the storm. It will begin to move in. It looks like just after the lunch hour. Right now, still fairly quiet to here in the Bay Area as well as the Sierra. Let's talk about the Sierra where the advisory for winter travel begins at 4 o'clock this afternoon. Afternoon and goes until Wednesday 10 a.m. with feet of snow and wind expected over in along the passes and above. Uh, for us, the high surf advisory continues into early Tuesday morning for very large breaking waves. We're talking 22 feet, 28 at times. The flood watch for the entire Bay Area, the wind advisory for the entire Bay Area, both of these begin at 10 a.m. as well. And you can see here from the forecast and projections, we do expect it to be very breezy to windy. Along along our coastline, in our hills, but all of us could see winds gusting 30, 40, even a little bit stronger at times, and that's enough to bring down the trees as well as create the power outages. And this advisory goes until early Tuesday morning. A better look at the rainfall amounts and the timeline coming up in just a little bit.